Now, last week, Thursday, we had very, a very unpleasant news of a 90-year-old woman who was lynched, and she died a few uh, minutes later. And after that incident, we've heard from individuals, corporate institutions, all condemning the act. We've heard from the current gender minister, uh, the former one. We've heard from uh, former states, uh, uh, former presidents and current ones, all condemning the act. Now, yesterday, uh, we heard from the IGP who has dispatched his men to that part of the region to investigate the matter as well as arrest persons whose actions led to uh, the demise of those women. And the big question is, is it enough that we condemn the act? So we saw a building which comes in Ghana since 1885 and is still ongoing. What are we doing to ourselves all in the name of tradition? Uh, we hope to be joined by a legal practitioner to know what the law says in the midst of all of this, but I've been joined in studio by Bishop Emmanuel Lacan, who is with the Victory Bible Church International, to tell us what uh, he makes as a believer of all that is happening with this very particular situation. Good morning. Good morning. So my very first question to you will right. be, what do you make of this lynching of this woman, all in the name of tradition, the fact that she's a witch? I, I think um, it, it's, it's a dent on our civilization, and internationally it's going to uh, be a dent on this nation. Because if the camps, which camps themselves are bad, lynching this 90-year-old woman is out of the question. And uh, these things come up once a while, and we go to, we, we go, we, we wake up to it, make all the noise. After a while, we go to sleep. I pray that this nation will rise up and condemn this outright, and ensure that everything is put in place that something like this is not repeated. I don't know how long this will be an embarrassment to our nation and international circles. We'll come back to you saying that the nation should rise up and take an action. But let me first ask you, is witchcraft just a state of mind or it's real? Uh, from where I stand, uh, I believe that uh, witchcraft exists because I have experience uh, of coming to contact with things like that. And uh, the way we, we are approaching it is what I think is wrong. I think spiritual, the Bible mentions witchcraft, that they enslave nations, enslave families. In the Old Testament, they have a practice, they observed. But if you shift to the New Testament, this is not what should be done. Mm. I think uh, our understanding has been brought to bear in our nation. Education must go on. These places where these are happening, they have churches, they have religious bodies everywhere. They still stand aloof for these things to happen. And uh, I pray that as we wake up and ensure that we educate our people and, and, and make sure the legal forces and the, the government make sure that we, we, we bring the forces to, to, to bear on those who perpetrate these, these crimes mm -hmm. and some of them are maybe jailed or punished for this crime, it will be a deterrent for others for, for continuing on this thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I am saying uh, as much as... Uh, uh, we some of some people could say it. They've not. They don't know what it is. I believe that witchcraft exists. I was in Kofodia some time ago, and we were having a program at night. Somebody gave us a room to sleep. By by one a.m., we heard some noise in the kitchen. There was nobody in the kitchen, mm. but people were cooking. Tap was flowing. I had to wake up, go put it off, and all that. And then we had dogs barking. So how how do we identify a witch? How can I identify that you are you sitting here? You're a witch. How do I? That is the challenge. Mm. That is a challenge. No, so if you can't identify a witch, how do you know that I'm a witch? You see, you see it, is, it, is, it is the problem that we have to go and point out to somebody that you are a witch. Because if it's a spiritual thing, then we must attack it spiritually and not physically. And so the physical approach we are taking on is very wrong. And I'm saying, if you, you suspect someone to be a witch, then you go uh, attack the problem spiritually. If the person owns up or is attacked, the, the spirit would, would succumb and the person will yield up for deliverance. Jesus dealt with Mary Magdalene, out of whom demons were cast out. And she was restored to society and became profitable. That's the way we should look at it. Hmm. Okay, so you, you mentioned earlier on that as a country we should rise up and deal with it. What are you expecting to see? In terms of, I mean, look at the, the Ghana uh, police service. It took them 72 hours. This news broke 
on Thursday. Was yesterday we heard from the IGP that we are dispatching men to go and look at, investigate the matter, and also set aside some 2,000 cities for some people who uh, vouch information on, on, on persons whose actions led to the demise of those women. I'm asking you as a Reverend Minister, a Bishop, do you think that we are hypocritical in our actions? I think we've not been serious about this matter as a nation. Um, this thing happened on Thursday. I'm sure if we wanted to get people to book or to bring people to book, we will, we will find a way. The people in that community know who did it. There are leadership in that community who can point out those who did it. If we want to bring perpetrators to book, we can do it. I think we have not taken this matter seriously enough. This talk about 2000 and all that, maybe in that community it will be big money and somebody would, would divulge the information. I think if the, if the forces get to that place and confront leadership of that community, and, and when this uh, military major was, was lynched in the other place, the response was different. Right. And I expect the same response from our forces in, in this case. Mm -hmm. Because somebody's old lady, and, and, and you, you lynch the person and throw it to the world, mm -hmm. is an embarrassment. And we should be seen to be doing more than we are doing now. I mentioned earlier that we started building witch camps in Ghana since 1885. Mm -hmm. You are a bishop. Did you know about this at all? I, no, I know today it, it, it goes back before independence, but not about 100 years later. Like okay, that. so since 1885, we started building witch camps in Ghana. What do you make of it? All in the name of tradition. What, what are these witch camps supposed to do? Are they, are, are they important at all? I, I understand these camps are set to become like um, a, a place witches can run to so that they cannot be hurt and they can be safe there. I know there are uh, uh, organizations like Action Aid who are working to make their uh, stay in these camps a bit habitable. And so things, some things are going on. But I think that we've come to a place in this 21st century, if it, if it is true, that we, we should rise up to abolish these things and find a, a, a more modern approach to these things. I mean, if you cannot, if you just have to accuse somebody to be a witch, how about if it's not so? If accusation is false, that means that somebody has been, uh, been killed uh, for something, for a false accusation. Mm -hmm. And they are not, it, it, mostly it's women in these camps. It's mostly women and children. Uh, this uh, uh, masculine bias society is becoming too much. Uh, mm. We have witches, we have wizards. Why, why don't we have wizards in the camp? And it's only witches. Mm. Look, in this country, if you are a poor woman and you hit some age, you are branded a witch. If, if you have money, you are not a witch. If you, are, if you are poor, you are a witch. How about the old men? Why are they not branded witches? It, it goes way back. Jesus' days. Two people, two people will be in the act. The one caught is a woman. And he brought to Jesus whether she should be stoned or not. What was Jesus' approach? That is the Father's heart uh, we should be looking at. Jesus came to reveal to us the heart of God. He did not encourage the stoning of the woman. She, he spared the woman and said, go and sin no more. Let's even agree that somebody is into witchcraft. The approach is the love of God. The approach is to get the person to come to a place where the person can denounce that spirit and be taken through deliverance, if that, that assertion is accepted. But in, in, in a country where we have different beliefs, I think we should come at this thing in a more civilized way. And, 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 and I'm saying our forces must rise up and make a statement for this nation to know that this must end here. Yeah, we'll talk about that statement a bit, but unfortunately when we are talking about protecting women against violence and all, we saw women in that video stoning this 90-year-old uh, mm -hmm. woman and inflicting that pain on her. Uh, apparently the priestess, the chief priestess who predicted or said that she was a witch, uh, as a female, and you know, perpetrating this act. So. I'm, I'm, I'm asking, as believers, you are a bishop, as believers, what role can we play in the midst of all this, ensuring that injustice is not done to uh, human beings, especially women? women. You see, it, it, it goes beyond this. Look at when someone dies, maybe a, a man dies. Look at what the widow goes through. The widowers don't go through same. When the woman dies, the same night, the man will be walking around. Let, let a man die. While the man is in the state, the woman will be sitting by the corpse. 
And it is women who ensure, who sit by her to ensure that goes on. And I'm thinking it boils down to education. Mm -hmm. We must bring some light to our society and let women know that sometimes they become enemies to themselves. And it is women who push uh, female uh, gender mutilation. It is women who push for trocracy and take these children away. It, it, it's women who rise to enforce the things that degrade women. And the older ones who have been through it want to make sure it happens to the younger ones. Mm -hmm. I'm saying uh, there they, they are, they are laws in the country. We must let the laws work and let those who enforce the laws make sure that if you are a ruler of a society, of, of a village, of a, a town, you are still under the laws of the country. Mm -hmm. And you must make sure you abide by it or you are brought to book. So beyond condemning it, because you spoke about authorities rising up and making a bold statement. You have heard from uh, former uh, President Mahama. You have heard from uh, the former gender minister and the current one. You have heard from former Jerry Rawlings. You have heard you know, from authorities who are condemning the act and calling for these people to be prosecuted. Beyond that, how do we ensure this doesn't happen? Because it's not the first time. To ensure it is to, it is to ensure this doesn't happen is to make sure those who perpetrated this are captured and brought to book as an, a public example so that others will not emulate this. Then again, for the long term, I believe that our bodies like churches, like beliefs we have in this country must begin a system, a process of educating ourselves in a bit to change these understandings. If we do that, we would be altering the thinking. But for this not to be repeated, since it is hot, we must see the, the government come hard on those who cause this crime and make sure that we all know what happened to them. It could become a deterrent to the rest who are planning to do so. Yeah, because well, this should not be repeated. Well, yeah, I agree with you. It's not the first time and we are hoping it will not be repeated. But these which come still exist. We have which come still. We have heard about the Gambaga which come and a few others. What can be done to them? Because I heard you say earlier that the reason for these witch camps is, is like a safe haven yes. for these uh, so-called witches. But what can we do to reveal the whole idea about a witch camp? You see, basically, it boils down to those who have the light to take up the challenge and push for the light to spread. It is education. It is, sometimes it is the backing of government. And I, I, I shudder to say that sometimes in our bid to get votes, we do not want to offend uh, uh, traditional rulers and things like that so that it will not be found to be against the leader of a town. Mm -hmm. And so we lose votes. But if somebody wants to do the right thing, they can do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so b besides the police force and other, we need the backing of government to say, this is wrong, I'm sticking my neck out. A leader one day, the other day said, if Kalamse would, would cost him his, uh, his presidency, he's prepared to go through it. Trocosi has doused. If uh, somebody will rise to fight this, this one too will stop. We need a strong hand to make a statement that the government of Ghana in this, uh, this time of our, of our life will not countenance this and will, not, will do everything to make it unpopular. Let those who did this, and they can be arrested, they can be found. Let them be found, brought to book. People do terrible things. They are found, they are brought to book. Political beings are, are acid was poured on somebody some time ago. The, the one who did it was arrested. If you tell me you can't find those who committed this crime, I don't, I don't understand. Well, I, I like that the comment you made about politicians politicizing crime and ensuring that they don't step on toes of electorates, if you like. How bad has this degenerated, you know, our society? I, I, I think it's, 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 it's so loud out there. Look, in our lifetime, we've seen these things happen many times. These camps are there. They live in terrible conditions. What is government doing about that? Nothing. Virtually nothing. It is private bodies, independent bodies, who stick their neck out to make sure they, they do something about their livelihood. I am saying that as a nation, it is time we put up a collective front and it should be from government and we should put politics aside and save humanity. Let's be humane 
and, and make sure our women folk are respected. This disrespect for women is too loud. And, and, and it is still ongoing. This should be um, an occurrence for us to rise up and say, enough is enough. Because somebody's mother, grandmother, was just lynched and life was snipped out of her. It's so embarrassing, degrading to our country. And I think that this country must rise up and put a stop to this nonsense. Rise up and put a stop to this uh, nonsense, you say. Uh, Bishop Emmanuel Lacan, thank you for passing through. And unfortunately, we couldn't bring you the part of the legal practitioner to tell us what the law says. 72 hours after this man was lynched and died, the police is up uh, in that uh, part of the country uh, fishing out for these uh, persons whose actions led to. Well, we have a video to to show for it and and i'm asking i mean what, what does the law really say maybe in another conversation we'll bring you the legal perspective of this very uh this whole thing about a 90 year old woman getting lynched because uh, of uh, the suspected her of being a witch